So this is day three of my average timer app design. And in this one, I'm taking the sketches that I turned into a prototype in the last video, and I'm gonna draw over the top of them and turn them into cleaner wireframes. This is something a little bit closer to my final visual design, uh, but it's still not totally polished. But this is a lot more realistic and it's gonna set me up nicely to be able to do animations in the next video. So tomorrow, I'm gonna start doing the custom transitions and animations to make this really come to life. And then I'll use the remaining time to put the finishing touches, finalize the visual design, Okay, it's time to work on the visual design of my prototype. When I start drawing, these link layers are gonna kinda get in my way. So what I can do is hit the hide links button in the toolbar. This is really handy, hides all the links, and now I can just focus on drawing. Now all these screens are just flat individual images. And what I'm gonna do is start drawing right on top of them. I'll start with this button. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. I'm using the R shortcut to quickly access the rectangle tool. I'll give it rounded corners. I'm gonna choose a nice green color for that, and I'll put a label in here. Now I wanna have a triangle shape that's used for all of the start timer buttons. So I'm gonna draw a triangle. I'll insert a vector, click three points, and to make this a perfect triangle, I'm gonna select the left two points and hit in the arrange options here, hit the align left button, then select all three points and choose distribute vertically. Now I'll take just that right point and I'm nudging it in with my keyboard. Okay, that looks good. I'll turn that white and I'm gonna give the shape a bit of a radius so that has nice rounded corners. Now I'll select the timer label, the play button and the button background and align those all around their centers. Maybe I should make this button a little bit shorter. If I hold option while resizing, it resizes from both sides and I think that looks about right. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is make these smaller start timer buttons. So I'm gonna hit O to draw an oval, hold shift and drag right over the top of that. Now to get the same color, I'll select the background of this button and do command option C. That copies the style, including the color. Then I'll do command option V to paste it in here. Then I'll take the triangle and duplicate that and put it right on top of the circle. Now let's select the circle and the triangle and then use align vertically and align horizontally to get it in the middle. But with the triangle, you usually have to fine tune it a little bit to get it right in the center. And I think that triangle is a little bit too big for that small circle. So I'll make it, I'll just scale it down a little bit. Again, I'm holding option to scale from the center. All right, now I'll select both of those, group it, and I'm gonna name that timer circle. Then I'll finish the rest of this row. I'm gonna type cook dinner over here, select that text and make it black and then I'll draw a rectangle over all of this and make it white and I'll move it down below those other two layers. Now I'll select the timer start button, the label and the background and align them in the middle. And I'm gonna group that and name this group row. Now I'm gonna duplicate the entire row by option dragging it and snap it right to the bottom of the previous one. And then if I press command D, it'll repeat that action. And once again, it repeats it again and I'll do even one more so it goes off the bottom, so I have some content to scroll. Now I'm gonna give these more realistic names. You can expand the screens if you're working on a taller screen. Just drag from the bottom, and you can see the extra content. All right, now I'd like to give a border to each one of these rows, and I'm gonna do that by command clicking to select through the group to select the background layer of each group. So I'm holding command and shift now, so I've got all the backgrounds selected, and I'm gonna add a border and that'll be an outside border, one point in width, and that'll just be a light gray. Since it's an outside border, you can't see it on the right and left because it extends outside of the screen. Now I'm gonna select all of these. You know, I think this text is too big. So I'm gonna command click to select the text layer inside of this group and then hold shift and command and cl uh, click on all the rest of them. And I'll change the font size down maybe to 20. Now if I command click to select the text, and then hold shift and add the background layer to the selection. Then I can align these to their vertical centers. So let me just quickly get these all into alignment. And now I'm gonna hold shift, click each of these rows and put the entire thing in a scroll group. So I'll click the scroll group button and down here you can see it's automatically chosen vertical scrolling. And I'm gonna make the content size a little bit bigger. And let me open this in the preview just to make sure that that scrolling works. 
All right, that looks good. And I might wanna make this scroll so that it goes up to the top of the whole screen, but for now, the way it's set up works. All right, now I'm ready to delete the background image, but you can see it's just white now behind it. So I'm gonna change the background color of all the screens to this light gray. And you can do that by clicking in an empty area of the canvas and then choose background color. I'm gonna use this eyedropper to select the light gray color. And I forgot to group this button, so I'm gonna group that, call it button. I'll call it timer button. And I'll call this timers scroll group. Maybe I should move this up a bit, something like that. And I'm going to scale this back down so it's not expanded anymore. All right, so there's the basics of my home screen. So I'll just move on to the second screen and continue with a similar process. white rectangle, I want to round just the top left and top right corners. So if I double click on the rectangle, I get into vector edit mode. And then I can drag a selection around just the top two corners and set the radius on those. I'm going to set that to five. Now I'm drawing this graph line and I'd like for the points to be evenly distributed. So I'm just, I've just drawn them kind of randomly and now I'm selecting all of them and I'll use the distribute horizontally button to make them nicely aligned. And then with the whole thing selected, I can click the align center button to make sure that the graph is centered. Then I'll add the background of the graph to the selection and choose the center vertically button. And this isn't the prettiest graph of all time, but I'm gonna come back and update this later. For that timer, timer detail screen, I'm just gonna duplicate the one that I already created for the regular timer, and then I'll just modify this a bit by removing this text field. And you know, I'm not sure exactly how I wanna handle this. So for now, I'm just going to put this text here in black, but I'm thinking maybe this whole thing should look different in this case, or maybe it shouldn't show up at all. Um, I'll leave it here for now and I'll come back to that later. But now I have all the screens designed with text and layers built inside of Flinto. So now I can do some real animation. And this isn't my final visual design, but this is more of a wireframe stage. So I think that I'll probably tomorrow do another phase where I really update the visuals to look really nice. But this is giving me a much more realistic view of what my prototype is gonna look like.